Here's an example where we use induction and recursion together. In addition, we'll also get to use complete induction. Now, we're interested in working with strings. So by a string, I mean a finite sequence of left and right parentheses. For example, we could consider x equal to left, left, right, left, left. For a given string, we'll define L of x equal to the number of left parentheses in x, R of x is equal to the number of right parentheses in x. Then N of x will just be the length of our string. So that's L of x plus R of x. Of particular interest, we're interested in the subset of balanced strings. These will be defined recursively. So we have the following three rules. First, we have the empty string, which I denote by lambda is balanced. Then to get all other balanced strings, we have the following two rules. X is a balanced string, and so is left x right. And if we have x and y balanced, then so is x y. So that means take x, concatenate with y. Now, these rules are going to generate a subset of all strings. Our problem of interest, if x is a balanced string, then I want to show L of x is equal to R of x. The number of left parentheses in x equals the number of right parentheses in x. Before we get to the proof, let's look at some examples. So we'll just build up from scratch. Now, if we go by length of strings, okay, for length zero, we only have the empty string. By definition, that's balanced. A little bit of thought shows, we'll never have balanced strings that have odd lengths. So we're gonna go directly from length zero to length two. So the only balanced string I have of length two is gonna go from the empty string to left, right. Note here, we have, okay, L of X equal to R of X equal to one. Going to the next length, take equal to four, what can I do? Well, we could take this balanced string, okay, of length two, put it in parentheses, or concatenate with itself. And that's all we can do. Here we note, we have L of X equal to R of X equal to two. Going one more step, okay, we have length equal to six. We note we have the following, okay, one, two, three, four, five options. Then we have L of X equal to R of X equal to three. One important thing to note, okay, one thing you'll notice in all of our examples of balanced strings, okay, they're all even, and they all start with an L and with an R. Important to note, Okay, one approach you could try doing the induction is to remove those outside parentheses. But that's going to cause problems. Because if I pull the outside parentheses from the string here, I'm going to wind up with right, left. And that's not going to be a balanced string. Okay, you'll note we only have one balanced string of length two, and that's equal to left, right. Now, how do we set up the induction proof? First note, we'll pin the induction to L of X, the number of left parentheses in X. It seems more natural to use N of X, okay, the length of X, but then because we're using balanced strings, okay, the lengths are always even, and then we would have to account for the fact that we're not using the odd lengths. So to get around that, better just to use L of X. Next, to take advantage of the recursive definition, let's consider, okay, rules two and three in the definition, as we run them through our induction argument. Now, for rule two, let's suppose I have a bound string x with L of x equal to R of x equal to k. Okay, so that's by assumption. If I use rule two, I just put parentheses around x. Now, L of x, okay, inside of parentheses, and R of x inside parentheses, we're just adding one to each of those. So they're both gonna be equal to k plus one, which is the result that we want. They're equal to each other. So this step is well suited for regular induction. On the other hand, if we use the construction from part three, okay, here I'm gonna take X and Y bound strings and concatenate. The rule that we use to drive the argument will be, okay, that if I take L or R, apply it to X, Y, that's equal to L of X plus L of Y. So I'm counting left parentheses, it doesn't matter if I count with X and Y together, 
or if we count separately and then add. Now the problem here is I need to control the number of left parentheses in X and Y at the same time. So for this, that's going to be better suited for using complete induction. So in this case, we would assume that we have our statement true whenever the length of X and length of Y are both less than or equal to some K. So if we think of this as, okay, induction is a ladder argument, we normally just think, okay, we have the base case gets us on the ladder. The induction step is going to let us go from one rung to the next. When we use complete induction, we don't go from one rung to the next. We just assume that we're able to climb up to rung N. And then once I know that, we're able to climb up to rung N plus one. So it's more of a mouthful, but it lets us handle complicated statements where we're trying to bound more than one item. Now, for the proof itself, okay, we announced we're going to do proof by complete induction on L of X equal to N. For our induction statement, we want L of X is equal to R of X for all X bound strings with L of X less than or equal to N. For our base case, okay, I'm going to suppose L of X is less than or equal to zero. So the only string that satisfies this condition is the empty string. In that case, we have L of lambda equal to R of lambda equal to zero, and our base case holds. Now, for the induction step, we're to assume that the induction hypothesis is true when L of X is less than or equal to N. So I want to show that our statement is true when we have L of X less than or equal to N plus one. Now, we already have most of this done by assumption. So by assumption, we're assuming our statement's true when we have L of X less than or equal to N. So we only need to show that it holds when we have L of X equal to N plus one. Now, what are the two ways to construct our balanced strings? Well, from construction two, I can assume that X is given in the form, okay? We are gonna put Y in parentheses where Y is balanced. Now you'll note the number of left parentheses in Y is gonna be less than the number of left parentheses in X, because X will have one more. So our induction hypothesis is gonna hold for Y. So that means L of Y is equal to R of Y, and then we just go with what we had on the previous board. So I just write everything out. L of X is equal to L of Y in parentheses. It's equal to L of Y plus one. It's equal to R of Y plus one by assumption. Equal to R of Y in parentheses, equal to R of X. That's the statement that we want. So if we're in this case, then our induction is gonna hold. Now, Let's suppose X is constructed using rule three. Then we can write X as Y concatenated with Z, where Y and Z are balanced and non-empty. Because we have that the only string with L of X equal to zero is the empty string, that means L of Y and L of Z are strictly less than L of X equal to N plus one. So L of Y, L of Z satisfy the conditions of our induction hypothesis we can assume that L of Y equals RY, L of Z equals RZ. Now, we follow our nose. So L of X is equal to L of YZ. That's equal to L of Y plus L of Z, equal to R of Y plus R of Z, equal to R of YZ equals R of X. That's what we're trying to prove. So this means our induction step is true. And because we have the base case in the induction step, that means we have our proof by induction. So that's where we end. Now, I used one fact twice in our proof, so let's talk through that. We could do this with another complete induction argument, but enough just to talk through it. So we've used, if I have X a bound string and L of X is equal to zero, okay, that holds if and only if X is the empty string. Now, one direction it's clear, so for the other direction, let's suppose X is a bound string, L of X is equal to zero. I wanna show that X is the empty string. So let's think about this. Well, if we've constructed X using rule two, that means X is equal to Y in parentheses. And we see here, this means that L of X has to be strictly bigger than zero. Okay, once I pick up 
I left parentheses, I can never get rid of it. So we never have case two. Now, if we look at construction three, okay, if at any step in our construction of X, we have to invoke step two, okay, that's gonna introduce a set of parentheses which we'll never get rid of. So once we introduce a left parentheses, we keep it till we finally get our construction to X. So that means I'm never gonna use rule two. That says, okay, what are we using to construct X? We can start with the empty string, and then all we can do is concatenate the empty string with itself. So with rules one and three, the only thing we can get out of that is the empty string. And that's gonna be our result. 